A parent's worst nightmare is to have their child abducted and sexually assaulted, and in this case, that parent took revenge into their own hands. After years of learning karate, 11-year-old Jody Ploche had a trusting relationship with his teacher, Jeff Dorset. When Jeff offered to take Jody for a 15-minute drive one day, Jody's parents were happy to see their son being looked after by his mentor. But instead, Jeff abducted the boy, dyeing his hair to disguise him and traveling 2,000 miles to a motel room where he molested him. Police rescued the boy and arrested Jeff but for Jody's father Gary, the story was far from over. With his son's abuser being escorted back into town on a flight, he disguised himself with sunglasses and a baseball cap and waited by a phone booth. As police led Jeff through the arrivals hall and news cameras began filming, Gary seized the moment, spinning around with a gun in his hand and shooting his son's abuser directly in the head, killing him instantly. Facing a murder trial, the judge only ordered five years of probation and 300 hours of community service, saying that in this situation, prison would just be counterproductive. If you think you're above the rules of science, double check your parachute. Michael Hughes was a stuntman nicknamed Mad Mike who had no qualms telling the world that he believed the Earth was flat. Taking his theories to the next level, he built a homemade rocket and planned to launch himself a mile high to capture footage of the flat disk he believed we all live on. Adamant that he could prove thousands of scientists and years of research wrong with a steam-propelled backyard experiment, Mike invited film crews to document his flight attempt, but instead they filmed a disaster. As Mike's rocket took off, the return parachute designed designed to gently float him back down to earth immediately ripped off and Mike failed to reach his designated height before the rocket slowed down and began plummeting back to earth. It's unknown whether Mike managed to sneak a peek at the earth's curvature and reconsider his beliefs, but there is no doubt he realized the gravity of the situation on the way down. Sadly, Mike did not survive the crash landing. Of all the things you could regret doing while intoxicated, I'm guessing that stealing a poster wouldn't be too high on the list. But for Otto Warmbier, it was the worst decision of his life. While visiting North Korea in 2016, Otto celebrated New Year's Eve drinking with friends he had made in his tour group. Two days later at the airport before boarding their flight, guards approached and led Otto away. One of his friends jokingly said, that's the last time we'll see you. Unfortunately, it was. North Korea announced that Otto had committed a hostile act against the state. On New Year's Eve, he had wandered into a staff-only area of the hotel and removed a government-issued propaganda poster from the wall. Otto begged for leniency but was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor. One year later, the USA negotiated Otto's release, but upon his return to US soil, it was discovered that he had been in a coma since first being convicted. US doctors were unable to determine the cause of his vegetative state and six days later, at just 22 years old, Otto passed away. Would you wear a diaper on a road trip to avoid toilet stops? Lisa Nowak was so determined to drive 900 miles, she did just that. But it wasn't an ordinary diaper and it wasn't an ordinary road trip. She wore a NASA issued adult diaper she owned because she was an astronaut, but her ability to handle tense situations didn't help guide her judgment when it came to jealousy and revenge. In her bag were latex gloves, a pistol, ammunition, a drilling hammer, an eight inch knife and more. Arriving at Orlando's airport, she put on a black wig and a trench coat and waited for a woman to exit. Chasing her down, the woman jumped into her car and locked the doors, but Lisa still managed to pepper spray her through the window. Her terrified victim, Colleen Shipman, had no idea what was happening. She had no idea that Lisa was her partner's ex-girlfriend. And when he told Lisa he was seeing someone else, Lisa didn't like it. Police made it in time to save Colleen from what was about to be an abduction and possibly murder. But fortunately, the only thing that ended was Lisa's trustworthy reputation. By the time you get to the end of this video, will you remember how it started? Clive Wearing has the worst amnesia in the world and can only ever remember the previous 30 seconds of his life. I can't make new memories. The only consistent knowledge is his deep love for his wife and his piano playing skills. Every time his wife visits the care center where he lives, Clive is like a little boy meeting his first crush. And every time he has shown the piano in his room, he loses himself in performing with passion. When asked if he is happy, Clive becomes agitated and expresses his frustration at being locked in an eternal state of confusion and lack of awareness. Day and night exactly the same with no dreams of any kind. Fortunately though, 30 seconds later, he forgets that he was angry and can't wait to drink his first ever coffee again. 
Imagine fighting in the middle of a treacherous war on foreign soil, only to see an old neighborhood buddy in civilian clothing wander into your foxhole and offer you a beer. You'd be hallucinating, right? Not if you were pals with Chicky. In 1967, John Donahue, aka Chicky, was sitting in a New York pub when a news report came on TV about the ongoing Vietnam War. The bartender said, somebody ought to go over there, track down our boys from the neighborhood, bring them each a beer. So Chicky accepted the challenge. He loaded a duffel bag full of beer, jumped aboard a supplies Ship and spent two months traveling across the ocean. Once he arrived, he spent another two months tracking down the men from his old neighborhood as they fought in bloody battles across the country. Mistaken for special intelligence due to his plain clothes, he bluffed his way onto convoys, military planes, and helicopters. And with every beer passed to an old friend, Chicky reminded the surrounding troops that they were not forgotten by those back home. What a bloody legend. Don't get too good at playing your instrument or you might get kidnapped. Fats Waller wasn't your standard jazz musician. He wrote over 400 songs, played multiple instruments, had an incredible voice, and he knew how to make an audience laugh. One evening in 1926, as he was leaving his hotel, four men approached him with guns raised, forcing him into the back of a limousine, abducting him in plain sight. But far from your typical hostage situation, when they arrived at their destination, Waller was welcomed into a huge party where he was shown a piano and ordered to play. The party turned out to be none other than Al Capone's and his henchmen had decided to surprise their boss for his birthday with Fats Waller as the present. The star musician spent the next three days performing for Capone, only managing to take naps on his piano bench. He was given limitless food, champagne, plus paid $100 for every song he played. That's over $1,500 in today's equivalent. When the party finally stopped, Fats was driven back to his hotel with some wild memories and a whole lot richer. Ever felt unlucky because you missed the winning lottery numbers by this much? Well, meet Costas. His entire village of 70 households all joined together buying into Spain's biggest lottery. The only thing they forgot to do was tell Costas, the only man in the village to not have his name on the ticket. And they won. Everyone in the small town shared the $950 million jackpot except for old mate Costas. Ever had that sinking feeling? Well, say hello to Violet Jessup. In 1911, she was working on board the world's largest passenger ship when it collided with a British warship. She survived and was later transferred to a new position aboard a mighty sea vessel called the Titanic. We can all guess how that job went down. Escaping in a lifeboat, she lived on and moved to a new ship called the Britannic, which struck a deep sea mine, causing it to explode and sink the ship. Again, she attempted to escape in a lifeboat, but it got sucked into the ship's propellers, killing others as she dove into the ocean and swam to safety, living to the ripe old age of 83 where she passed away on dry land. Ever been worried that you picked the wrong spot for a vacation? Well, meet British couple Jason and Jenny. They headed to New York for a big city escape back in September 2001, when out of nowhere, terrorists crashed planes into the Twin Towers. Four years later, while they were in London, terrorists set off bombs in the city's subway system. Trying something completely different, they flew into the city of Mumbai, only to experience the worst terrorist attack in India's history. The unluckiest couple in history, right? Well, the truth is they're only unlucky thanks to the internet and bad journalism. Type their names into Google and the stories I've just told will pop up everywhere. But in fact, they hadn't even met yet when the Twin Towers took place. They were hundreds of kilometers from London during the subway attacks and they landed in Mumbai after the India terrorist attacks. The entire story was fabricated by a journalist they chatted to while on holiday to earn him some clickbait and the article has caused them nothing but grief ever since. Ready to hear a story?